Once you've made all your desired edits to a movie, it's time to publish. So to get this out of the Photoshop format and to a publishable video format, we'll choose File, Export, Render Video. And when you do, you can give it your own custom name. I highly recommend that you start numbering because you may do several versions of this to see if the width and height is ending up proper or if you've got it at the right file size, if you're going to be emailing it or sharing it on social media. So as you create each version of your video, give them numbers just to see as you change the setting how that impacts your file size, your dimensions, your upload speed. So when I give this a name, Photoshop now ships with the Adobe Media Encoder, and that's going to convert this from a PSD, a Photoshop file, to a usable video format. The most popular one for publishing today is H.264. That's the name for the compression type. A second popular format is QuickTime, but QuickTime requires a separate installer on Windows even though it's free at a lot of large corporate environments, they may not have the QuickTime player installed automatically. So do check with the people you're sending it to to see what format they prefer. Or if you're using social media, let's say you're uploading to Facebook, either one of these should work. And then Facebook will use its own video engine to share. But I'm going to leave it on H.264. I can keep it high quality. But if I'm publishing it somewhere else, maybe I want to deliver to an Android phone, it will size the width and height down to fit on that screen size. And you could go to a little higher screen size, or maybe Apple TV or an iPhone. But as I go down to the very bottom of the list, they even have YouTube presets, 720p or the higher resolution, 1080p. Mine was actually shot in 1080p. The width and height, if you look at those, the height is 1080. If the height was 720, that would be 720p. And my video was 29 frames per second. I could see that in the background in the timeline. So I'm going to choose YouTube High Definition 1080p at the frames per second that I recorded, that 29.97. So here's what I was referring to, width and height. The height is that P number that you see on televisions or when you're playing movies back on YouTube. And I usually leave all of the defaults here, and I will click Render. Now we'll give this a few seconds to render, depending on your graphics processor, your amount of RAM, the overall length of your movie. This can take more or less time. So I'll pause the video until it's finished, and then I will bring it back up once the render bar has disappeared. So that took about a minute and a half on my machine. It may take longer on yours. And let's take a look at that video file. So I will minimize Photoshop and Bridge, which I'm running in the background. I will open my project files. And here it is, the final 01.mp4, which is one of the most popular video formats. Now on the Mac, when I double click that, that's going to come up in the QuickTime player. It takes over most video players. On Windows, it may be the Windows Media Player. You can also play it in many browsers just by dragging and dropping it into the browser window or choosing File Open from Internet Explorer or Firefox or Google Chrome or Safari. But I'll hit Play to see how my 22 second movie looks all finished. Computer images have two types, raster and vector. Raster images will be up from pixels. Vector images are made up from points. And there you have it. I'm happy with that final result. As I look back at Photoshop, there are a few other settings, and this is why I number them. If I do File, Export, Render Video, you may notice the field order 
and you can experiment if you see quality loss or frames skipping. Progressive is the default, so I can experiment with upper or lower if it's not playing back the way I'd like. I could also try to publish in another format, like QuickTime, and I'll put the O1 on here and then test the playback difference. But I'm not going to do that. I will leave one in the folder for you, but I hope you've enjoyed all of the options that render video and publishing gives you when you look at what you can do with the amazingly powerful Photoshop CC video editing features.